Hey YouTube, so uh, responding to some of the comments that I got from my unboxing video of the Bixler 2, uh, I'm going to go over a quick tour of how I put the Bixler together. Now, I had previously recorded my actual build of this, and all the files got corrupted. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to give a quick overview of everything I did to put the Bixler 2 together. Um, so I guess I'll start off with the wings. So, uh, of course, as we can see here, this is the Bixler 2. It is, uh, has been flown uh, since my unboxing video. Anyway, so to put the wings together, I did want to go ahead and install flaps. I felt that uh, with all the extra weight that I plan on putting on this with FPV gear, um, flaps seemed like a good idea. So um, these are good old, you know these. These are the uh, Hextronic HXT900s from Hobby King. Uh, the default little weird no-name black servos that uh, the ailerons come installed with are uh, are glued in place with the weird glue stuff that this thing comes from, comes with, and of course the uh, push rod and uh, clevis is already put in place. And as you may remember in my uh, unboxing video, I mentioned that I would use some uh, aquarium tubing uh, to hold the clevis in place on the control arms. And uh, that's exactly what I did on every single one. And I like that. It makes me feel all warm and squishy inside knowing that the clevis aren't going to pop off. So that's what I did there. Um, I also uh, installed some servo extensions, mainly for the, actually for all four of these. Uh, the aileron servos come with really long wires, and the HXT900s come with regular wires. They both actually come out about the same uh, in the middle of the plane. And of course, the same thing goes for over here. And as you can see, I don't know how well you can see this in the video, but uh, my glue job on these servos was really sloppy. But eh, who cares? It's on the underside of the plane, nobody sees it. And of course, um, this thing is completely held together with the glue that the airplane came with. Um, and uh, so I did all that, I laid everything down really nicely in the channels, and then I uh, glued this uh, hunk of, of styrofoam in place, the EPO foam. Uh, in place and I was very careful to make sure that uh, there was no glue in the channel where the spar goes inside the wing so the spar can freely move in and out the spar is not glued in place in any way it pretty much just sits there in between the two wings and of course the wings are held on uh, with these two screws there's one right there and one right there which you should be able to see I can see them on my viewfinder so you should be able to see them even better on YouTube so and then of course uh, I had kind of a nasty uh, takeoff actually, not even a landing, and uh, I uh, chewed up the uh, the foam a little bit right here, and uh, so I went ahead and put a piece of extreme packing tape right there, and uh, all my other landings and of course my throws to get it out in the air uh, have all been really smooth. Uh, this piece of carbon fiber comes pre-glued, and uh, this plastic cap comes uh, already there and pre-glued. You can actually see here on the tail, uh, I used a lot of glue. And uh, right here is a little bit of the excess that squeezed out. Whoa, okay. I'm not going to peel. I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to. There we go. It looked like the whole thing was about to pull out of there. So, um, anyway, so there's my clevis and the aquarium tubing. There's your elevator, of course. Uh, my buddy also has one of these. And uh, he says for him, a problem that he was having. Flip this guy over here. Uh, a problem that he was having was uh, uh, he was finding that the sticker right here, the Bixler sticker, which is very, very, very thin, uh, um, this guide here was actually coming out, and that was causing the rudder to actually move out of place, and that would cause his airplane to to want to fly at a slip, fly at a slip angle, which of course is not good. So you might consider maybe putting some clear. Uh, packing tape over over these two stickers just to make sure to hold these control rod guides in place so they can't move around. One other thing I want to talk about is this spinner. Uh, this is not the spinner that the airplane came with. This is an E-Flight spinner and it's tiny. Um, hold on a second, let me go get the spinner that this thing comes with. Okay, so first of all, uh, sorry, these aren't spinners, they're prop adapters, my bad. Um, so uh, the one here on the right is the E-Flight prop adapter. And it's nice, machined, aluminum, perfect. Uh, this is the prop adapter that the airplane came with. As far as I can tell, it's some kind of flash molded, uh, probably aluminum. It's, it is a fairly lightweight material. And if you look 
really carefully. You, it's so off, you can actually see how off it is. Um, uh, that center hole, right there in the center of your screen, if you're watching this, um, is just slightly off. So you could you could actually turn the prop, and you'd watch the end. You'd watch the end of the uh, prop adapter move around. Not quite to this extreme. I'm, I'm making it a, an example. So, but uh, you you could actually see just how horribly out of line uh, this hole actually is. And uh, it's a little messy because I, I uh, put a little bit of Loctite on there to hold it in place, which uh, you're probably not supposed to do that, but that's something I do. And uh, so anyway, uh, I immediately went to go replace this, and unfortunately, uh, this E-Flight prop adapter, which is really small, and that's because the shaft size on the motor uh, that this airplane comes with is an odd size for how large the motor is. Um, usually you end up with a much thicker prop, or with a much thicker motor shaft, uh, with a motor of that size. So uh, smaller motor shaft usually means smaller motor, which usually means smaller prop. Uh, thankfully this E-Flight prop adapter um, was the exact, it was just ever so slightly too small, but uh, you know, if it's just a teeny teeny bit too small, I think it was off by two tenths of a centimeter, millimeter, centimeter? Which one's smaller? Come on you metric guys, I'm from America, everything's inches and feet over here. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, I will uh, put the part number for this, because I don't have it right in front of me, at the bottom of your screen. So just look right here, and there should be a blinking or something part number for this prop adapter. Um, I like it. Uh, the prop that uh, the airplane comes with seems fine. Otherwise, I haven't actually bothered to uh, get out my never-used Hobby King uh, prop balancer to actually balance the prop, but I probably should go about doing that at some point. But uh, yeah, so if something's cheap, um, cheap enough anyway, um, I'll tend to get two of something. And I want to say that these uh, uh, E-Flight prop adapters were like four or five dollars each. Um, I think I got them at A Main Hobbies, and uh, they showed up lickety split because A Main is here in California, um, actually just a couple hours drive from here. So uh, usually stuff from them comes pretty quick. Otherwise, I usually get stuff from uh, my local hobby store um, if I want it quickly. So anyway, that's just a quick rant about the um, really crappy prop adapter that these that these tend to come with. Now, my buddy, who also got one of these, um, uh, he says his prop adapter was more or less fine. But I've had I have seen some people on the Hobby King uh, product page for the Bixler talk about how bad this prop adapter is. So. Um, hopefully you'll get lucky, your prop adapter will be okay, otherwise uh, uh, consider uh, picking up the uh, E-Flight prop adapter, it's a very high quality, perfectly centered, and uh, it just takes some uh, finagling. Just remember that when you're putting this on the uh, motor shaft that you don't bang too hard on it because the motor shaft is fairly thin, I hear it bends fairly easily, and also if you look really carefully at the Bixar you'll see that the motor is mounted to a plastic um, let me turn the, turn the, uh, there we go, turn the camera's light on. The motor is mounted to a, a plastic motor mount, which is most likely glued to the, uh, foam. Probably with the same weird goop that this thing comes with to, uh, glue it together. And by the way, in case anybody's wondering, the goop that the Bixler comes with to glue it together works wonderfully. It actually works really, really well. I, I had my doubts. It's somewhere in between rubber cement and CA. It's weird stuff. Um, it's 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 just bizarre. So, so anyway. Um, all right. So uh, let's see. Well, since I happen to be pointing at it, <laughs> this right here speaks to how durable the uh, the uh, uh, Bixler 2 actually is. And uh, I will quickly cut in. Uh, the crash which I caught on video with my um, Contour HD right now Yeah, and you'll see more of that later on a different video, but I uh, hope you enjoyed that it was really funny and also kind of scary um, now uh, Now that you've seen that and you see that the airplane is more or less fine I mean we literally picked it back up in the air and threw it back into the air and it was flying immediately um, <laughs> Didn't repair it didn't do anything. I figured if the wing was gonna break off it was gonna break off it's foam. You can hot glue it back together. You can go on to Hobby King, wait for a while. Uh, hopefully some new 
uh, wings will show up in stock. Right now there aren't any at the, at the time of this recording. But uh, I'm actually going to go through a process. I'm going to try and take some uh, Depron and I'm going to shape it and form it and glue it on here. And then I'm going to sand it off and hopefully patch this little uh, this indent here. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there'll be more of that video later. Uh, let's see, here is the battery that I'm currently flying. Um, also from Hobby King, I went ahead and went with the uh, XT60 connectors on this. And because uh, I like XT60 connectors, they're cheap, they're, they seem pretty well made, uh, they're very tolerant of, of heat when you're soldering them together. Uh, they stay lined up really nice, I like them. Uh, the downside is most of my friends use Dean's connectors and if they want to borrow my batteries, uh, they need to use an adapter or something like that. So, And I actually keep adapters around in case somebody wants to borrow one of my flight packs. So anyway, so some things that I did while I was putting this together, I'm going to go ahead and pull the canopy off. Um, uh, I wanted to have a, uh, uh, this model I believe calls for a 20 amp speed controller. And uh, I wanted to have something with just a little more power. And then since this is enclosed and I figure there wouldn't be quite as much um, airflow going through here. Um, I, I figured you get a nice high quality, you know, E-Flight seems like they make really high quality stuff as opposed to um, something, you know, from Hobby King or something like that. So, and I'm sure Hobby, Hobby King has good stuff too, but so I went ahead and went with the uh, E-Flight 30 amp pro uh, from my local hobby shop. Cost about 40 bucks, which is kind of funny because you can buy pretty much the same exact speed controller from Hobby King for like $8 or $12 or something like that. But I was in a pinch and uh, uh, this thing runs very, very cool. I think the motor calls for like an 18 amp uh, speedo. And so I was hoping that uh, uh, this one, you know, would be uh, very underutilized by the motor. And it certainly is. It hardly puts off any power at all. Um, I had my doubts about putting the, uh, this is a Spectrum Orange RX, um, six channel. And I am using all six channels. Uh, there we go, because I'm doing uh, um, mixing uh, in order to uh, get the uh, flaps to work correctly. So, um, so I'm using all six channels. I actually really need a seven channel uh, for the uh, return to home option on the OSD Pro uh, that I'm going to be, or the iClops OSD, uh, Easy OSD that I'm going to be installing in this at some point. Uh, let's see what else. So, a couple things I did. Uh, as you can see right here, um, I put a little platform and then I hot glued some Velcro. I don't know how well that's easy to see, but I basically just took some Depron because I had some laying around and uh, I built a little platform here for the speed controller to sit on because you know you can see it's got those capacitors in there and uh, uh, I didn't want to have to worry about it. So I figured if I did that, pull it off the edge of the, of the airplane a little bit and uh, it would be good to go. And I also put on using two layers of Depron I hot glued all this together, just hot glue, and this is Velcro from the local um, local craft store, and uh, uh, it's it's just non-backed Velcro. Uh, you know, there's no sticky surface or anything like that on it. And I just hot glue the whole damn thing together, and eventually my flight packs are going to go right here, and that's going to help bring the CG back just a little bit because I do want to fly FPV with this plane eventually. Um, and again, I was worried about putting the uh, Orange RX um, next to the speed controller. I was told to never do that. And this is going to get moved around, so I think it'll be less of an issue as I start traveling at uh, further and further distances. And uh, this is a uh, E-Flight um, DSMX uh, remote antenna. I'm actually not even sure if it's working. Um, I'm only flying this airplane line of sight right now. And... Uh, uh, you know, so far no problems at all. The, the Orange RX is certainly certainly good enough for line of sight. I would say it's probably good to a minimum of 300 meters, or sorry, 100 meters, but I, I think it could probably go further than that too. And then of course right here uh, is the Velcro in the nose. Uh, that's where the battery goes right now. And I put a little bit of Velcro on there. It's just the way I do things. I always put the hooks uh, um, on the plane and I put the fuzzy on the battery. So, or I guess these are the loops and these are the hooks, or those are the loops and those are the hooks. Anyway, to me, fuzzy, hooky. So, anyway, so and of course I went ahead and soldered on a XT60. Um, the other nice thing about the uh, E-Flight, by the way, is that it came with 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors already soldered on the uh, um, ABC wires. And uh, so that was really nice. Um, other than that, there's just a big mess of cables in there. 
and uh, the airplane went together really easily. I mean, I'm not an experienced builder at all, and this thing went together just super great. Um, I was really happy with that. Now, one thing that I will note is um, on the inside of these wings, there is a plastic, uh, uh, there's a little plastic frame in there, and there's one on each wing, and the wings lock together, and uh, when my buddy actually hit his airplane in the exact same spot, but he treed his, um, and in the video that you saw, the little quick little clip that I inserted, you saw this airplane spin around, and uh, so I think a lot of that impact got absorbed by the, the, the kinetic energy getting released by the airplane spinning, where when he crashed into a tree, his airplane just went and just stopped. And uh, what happened was, is his wing actually pulled out, and the two notches on the wing actually completely separated. So he had to take his two screws out, pull both wings out, pull out the spar, and then he hot glued the center of his wings together. And then he crashed his airplane again and he did it to the other side. And he pulled it all apart, he hot glued the hell out of it, put it all back together and the plane flies great. Which you will also see in a future video. So, um, so just real quick as we finish up the video here, just gonna spin this guy around, this lovely lady I should say. And uh, again, I just used a crap ton of glue here. And I actually used some glue here too, but as you can see it, it actually didn't hold. Um, and uh, uh, might have been because I whacked my head against this because um, I had it hanging up and I whacked my head against it and it made a crack sound and I noticed that this pulled up but the rest of it seems like it's in there really really good and I tugged on it pretty hard and it doesn't move so that seems fine and uh, same thing with the elevator it seems like it's in there pretty well um, so hopefully it won't come apart and I, again I do love how um, uh, uh, it uses these nice little plastic hinges uh, they seem like they're pretty durable, actually, so I like that. And as you can see, there's very, very, very little slop uh, at all in pretty much all the control surfaces, uh, which is pretty impressive, uh, I think, uh, for being a relatively inexpensive plane. So uh, I guess that's about it. Um, if anybody has any questions about this plane, uh, please feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to respond in a timely manner. And uh, expect to see, I've got a bunch of uh, video recorded of this plane flying around, uh, which I'll be posting soon, but I wanted to post this quick sort of after build guide, um, or after build, whatever, walkthrough or preview or whatever the heck you want to call it. And um, uh, just kind of show you how easy this plane is to put together. Uh, I'm, I've been kind of surprised there's not many videos on the Bixler 2 out there. Of course, Flight Test has several because this is named after uh, Josh Bixler and uh, just uh, real excited to keep flying this thing some more and some more. Uh, quick little preview, I've got a Tech Sumo on the way as well from Hobby King and I can't wait to fly that because I want to have an airplane that I can float FPV stuff on and I want to have an airplane I can just fly. And um, so yeah, thanks for watching.